Hey, bro. Huh? Let me ask you a question, man. Why you ain't changed clothes, bro? Let me ask you a question. Every time you see me, you got to ask me a question like you 50, 50 cent asking people 21 questions. But, bro, bro, bro you got to have some hygiene, Let man. me ask you, did you take a bath last night? Of course, and that's what I'm telling you, man. You got to have some hygiene, well, 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 man. Congratulations, because I'm homeless, and now I had a luxury to take a bath every night and wash clothes like that. So be grateful for what you got and stop always talking about people and stuff. That's what's wrong with people. They always talking about people instead of trying to help them and stuff. Just thank God that you able to take a bath and change your clothes every night. I might have them on the next day and the next day and the next day. That's between me and God. You worry about yourself. Any more questions? <laughs> you good. Oh, I'm right down when I thought. Have a blessed day. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to the Beatzilla PDX official show news break. The uh, midweek <clears throat> midweek report edition. Excuse me. Midweek report edition, ladies and gentlemen. And what you see on the screen is uh, as though some things have started. You know, you hear the, the talk about Taylor Swift. And it was an opportunity for people to uh, basically diss or low key, yeah, low key diss Michael Jackson again. Uh, again, it kind of backfired, and people took notice of it, and and rightfully so. Uh, so we're going to talk about that this evening. Um, and they're saying the film version of Taylor Swift's Stadium Tour instantly became one of the highest grossing concert films ever, dwarfing those by Justin Bieber and the late Michael Jackson, which Michael Jackson's This Is It is a documentary. It's a behind the scenes documentary. It's by no means a concert video. You are not getting a complete concert. Uh, from Michael Jackson on that. <clears throat> what you actually do get is a uh, rehearsal footage and whatnot, which is very dope for uh, musicians like myself and and artists. Uh, that should always be uh, pretty inspiring to see and watch. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know they as as people tend to do. Uh, when we have our black artists, they like to get away from. Uh, they like to get away from who uh, or the greatness of our artists, which, you know, we, we really do not have to allow that to happen. And we don't have to allow that to take place. So with that being said, this broadcast is called Forever the Goat, Michael Jackson. and. Uh, not only looking at Michael Jackson, but we're also going to take a look at um, 
how they're actually kind of doing the same thing to Beyonce. Um, and so it, it this just prompted me to kind of go look at some things because for those of us black men with black wives, uh, your wife is probably leaning a lot more to the Beyonce side of unknowing her music than Taylor Swift. Um, so it's very interesting for me. I couldn't tell you a Taylor Swift song to save my life. That's, you know, not, not cramping on her talent at all, but uh, it's nothing that I could ever tell you. There's one song that I know, and I don't even know the title of. Uh, and they don't play her music anywhere where I'm at. So, you know, there's that. Uh, but with that being said, family, before we go any further, please hit that like button. And if you would, share this on your social media as well. Um, I'm sure we're going to have some Swifties angry uh, because we have to, you know, Sometimes it takes drawing comparisons. And, and, you know, one one big comparison that sticks out is this one here. You know, so we just got to say, hey, there's Beyonce. <clears throat> and then we've seen some things from Taylor Swift that might... Uh, rub somebody as, as very questionable about um, was she trying to blatantly steal from Beyonce or not. Uh, but we're going to get there. <laughs> um, and then also want to look at maybe some of the reasons of why they don't like Michael Jackson still to this day. Because some of the things he's done um, in his career, which one of the biggest important things and major things that he did was his savvy acumen for the business side of music. You can't, you, you would not get any better there. Um, so there's that. Um, but so I want to go back and take kind of a flashback of uh, Michael Jackson talking at uh, Saxe, the Al Sharpton's National Action Network. And that's when they were talking about um, reclaiming, you know, reclaiming music, reclaiming our music, which coincidentally happens to coincide with things that we're dealing with right now when it comes down to hip hop. Now, funny, the, the person that... I, has has often said before they passed that they were the creator of hip hop today, which would be James Brown. And he very boldly told you before he left that all of this came from him. So with that being said, I, I don't think, well, you weren't in New York. You weren't there. Well, you weren't there in South Carolina where that brother was born. Cause I believe, uh, George Clinton and uh, and James Brown were both born in South Carolina. Go figure. Of course, you know, uh, you know they hail. Um, of course, uh, James Brown hails from Georgia, but I'm pretty sure that both of them brothers uh, were born in the state of South Carolina. So that's. Um, some of the birthplaces of modern day funk as we know it, which of course, both of them brothers uh, were grown up in the church where funk was birthed. So, you know, they're, they're really trying to take their way. It's, and they're finding it very hard to get around that B3, the tambourines and drums. They're finding very hard to get past that. Because truth be told, in what they're calling um, like rip, rap and hip hop, you better go back and listen to them records and hear what's in them. There was a tambourine, there are drums, and there's an organ. That is the base of James Brown's funk. Trap music today literally is James Brown's band makeup. Just do the, the tools of trap music organ with B3, Hammond B3 organ, 
horns and an 808. The only difference is you add the 808 instead of live drums. That's it. That is it. So, uh, you know, there there's a lot going on right now with the with them playing with our music. So, just going back to show you why they do what they do. They do not like resistance. And so let me say shout out to Tariq Nasheed um, for putting together this documentary, Microphone Check. Uh, he has a um, fundraiser or a crowdfunding going for this to where you, uh, people can participate. So uh, you can go to his page on Twitter. And go check that out. So shout out to our brother, Tariq Nasheed, uh, for putting that together. And as well as our good brother, Dwan B. I do not have that handy. I wish I did. Um, but it's bigger than hip hop. And that is uh, the, the another hip hop documentary brought to you by uh, the brother, our good brother, Dwan B. So, and which actually, uh, Dwan B will also be in my check. So that's, <laughs> that's how those things end up going full circle, you know? Uh, so let me, let me get this, uh, this Michael Jackson speech for y'all there. Um, and because we, we need to first take a look at that because, what they don't want are artists speaking the way he's speaking and also speaking about the people the way he's speaking about these people. And then, of course, he always refers to black folks and uh, would tell you how we are the authors. We are the creators here right in America, not uh, jumping anywhere to, to Africa or anything like that, but right here in America. So uh, let me get that queued up here so we can take a look at that. All right. All right. All right. Buckle up, family. Buckle up. Buckle up. Because, yeah, this, this will not disappoint uh, for a myriad of reasons. Everybody singing. Everybody singing. Everybody singing. Same for Brother Michael. Here in Harlem. On our way to Sony. On their way to Sony. We got to fight racism. Got to fight oppression. Boy, not if we have to. Mm. Now, you don't hear nobody talking. Everything that you just heard right there within the phrases of him singing. When's the last time you heard... That's what we have to make it put at the forefront of our business. From the do very man that you see singing. Just, you know, <clears throat> understand everything that you're witnessing right here. See, for, for Reverend Al, this is pre-MJ and Prince death. And Whitney Houston, by the way. All of them are still living in, in good health and here. Now you understand all the things that Al Sharpton was able to see within all of this time frame and why he's talking different now. But just pay attention. Sing it for Michael. He sang it for us, y'all. We gonna sing for him now. Okay. Everybody say, hands off my 
And that is the pr- approach that we need to hold today, ladies and gentlemen. Did you hear what he just said? Hands off, Michael. And that's exactly what they are attempting to do right now. Within this week, you have two things coming at a dead man. Taylor Swift, which they had to embellish the truth to try to to, uh, tap Michael Jackson. Then they, they promote their other favorite almost black guy. Drake from Canada or Canada. (laughs) Heard that new Dre record, eh? Oh, Lord. So, again, hands off, Michael. They're again trying to come at the icon. Let's listen to why. Brother, brother Michael Jackson. Um, and I'm going to talk to you on because we have the demonstration at Sony, as you know. This is very important because throughout the years, black artists have been taken advantage of. And it's time now that we have to put a stop to this incredible, incredible injustice. And uh, like um, Mrs. Sharpton was saying, people from James Brown to Samuel Davis Jr., some of the real pioneers that, uh, that inspired me to be the entertainer that I am. These artists are always on tour because if they stop touring, they will totally go broken. And uh, it's been the record companies really, really do conspire against their artists. They steal, they cheat, they do whatever they can, especially the black artists. Now, with what he just said, they they do everything to cheat their artists. Maybe something like encouraging and funding the the worst habits of an artist who's in the streets. But one thing that you tell them to make sure that, you know, you're going to be a good businessman for them is, hey, I got to put some life insurance on you because I don't want to lose out on my investment. And, you know, you young and in the streets like, hey, yeah, whatever, man, because we finna get this money. But understand what he fully understands what he's funding. He fully understands the danger that puts you in. The streets don't change for your hype or your records or your money. The streets are going to be the streets. So if you're in the streets, <clears throat> there's things that are, number one, still required of you. And number two, you're going to have to still abide by them rules. And, you know, love of the streets, like KRS once said, love's going to get you. And so now you have a whole label who, number one, never had your best interest at heart never had your neighborhood or community's best interests at heart. And even if you were an immigrant, they had you tailoring your music for a black audience because they wanted to push something culturally through you. And so not only do they target you to break you, but they also target you to destroy your own communities from the music side of the game, while mostly everybody in your entourage has uh, two and three bodies on them at the time that they're showing up in your video. This is how these people play, and they not new. They've been around this thing for a very long time. They've seen every kind of gangster there is. This is 
show business, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest gangster on the block outside of the IRS, which I guess you go up to some levels, you'd be actually confused on who's who. Nonetheless, let's continue. This ends Sony Tommy Matola. Tommy Matola, the president of the Record Division, is a mean, he's a racist, and he's very, very, very devilish. Yes. So I need your support, not just for me. When you fight for me, you're fighting for all black people. Dead and alive. It seems that to me, um, I really believe it's a conspiracy because the story always ends the same. We, um, we pioneer, we innovate. You know, um, at the end of the story, you know, it's, it's not an accident. It's happened on purpose. Yeah. So we have to put it into it forever. Now, I understand what he said. We create, we innovate. This is being done on purpose. We are talking about whitewashing funk and soul and hip hop back then. It was coming out of Michael Jackson's mouth. And from these labels, from the same entities who are funding Joe Biden. I mean, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, <laughs> I guess did that too. But uh, uh, Fat Joe and Busta Rhymes and, and the Hip Hop 50 and all of that, it's all part of the same situation. Which, lo and behold, we have a situation that all of a sudden there's a group that is, if you don't, if you don't put their needs before the rest of the world's needs, then you are anti-something. Damn the rest of the world. Even if you are from blood relation to certain people tied to certain things and conflicts out here, hey, if you don't go with this particular group, then you might find yourself in a vicarious position quickly like the NYU uh, student and a few other students right now that are having issues for just simply riding with their folks I mean simply just riding with their folks that's the problem they roll with their people and they are having Super duper 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 issues. Um, and that's that's not cool, man. That's not cool. People should be able to feel compassion for their homeland brothers and sisters. That should be something here in America that I mean, you you want everybody to identify as what they are as long as they ain't identifying as foundational black America. But now if they say they are from Palestine, they're they're Palestinian. You don't even want them to support their people over there that's getting harmed. That's insane. And like Michael Jackson just said, devilish. Love you. Thank you. Come here, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, are you with us? Are we with them? Are we with the others? Are we gonna stop the racism? Now let me say this: when people have come to Michael, as I said earlier. Reporting that they were called fat black nigga. This man made racist remarks. There's no way people are going to sit with our money. We're the consumers. 
they sell their CDs in our communities and they made billions of dollars. Michael Jackson made billions of dollars for the industry. And now for him to ask for fairness is not controversial, it's no more than right. He does not want you to give your child money to buy his record and he's not protect the integrity of your child. He does not want you to spend your money and not be respected by the people that make the profit. Now you may agree or disagree on anything, but we cannot disagree when it comes to our self-respect. This is about our self-respect. This is about our dignity. And if he will stand up, then I believe his community and all communities must stand up. And I absolutely agree with you, Al Sharpton, on that, because that broken clock is definitely right. So again, once again, go support our brother, Tariq Nasheed, for his hip-hop documentary, because again, if you don't support people and support our own interests for ourselves, just like the Reverend Al Sharpton said, hey, man, who's going to do it? So again, shout out Tariq Nasheed. Uh, and shout out our brother Dwan B. Uh, it's more, it's bigger than hip hop. It is bigger than hip hop. I need to get that uh, cover as well, uh, so I could uh, show that to y'all. So shout out to brother Tariq Nasheed and brother Dwan B. On their respective um, hip hop documentaries. So again, telling the truth about our history, telling the truth about our present. You know what I'm saying? And so <laughs> as you see, there's they, they they still can't stand this man today. You know, they hate Michael Jackson today, ladies and gentlemen. And it is crazy. So let me um you know, let me go into the because they're talking about Taylor Swift and her uh her her what you call them eclipsed. And again, we're talking about this is it. You understand what I'm saying? This this is it. So uh, that's clearly a documentary. You understand what I'm saying? And um there's so much that that Michael Jackson has accomplished that he himself as a solo artist without a thousand features has been able to uh, like just completely capture the whole 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 the the nation or the world really. Michael Jackson, it was an, an absolutely was an act by himself. But they say a phenom. Um, so this is this is something I'm looking at right here, and this is Wikipedia, not the greatest source. But I think when it comes down to Michael Jackson facts, this is we we can roll with this. Um, Michael Jackson's "This Is It." Uh, Michael Jackson's This Is It is a 2009 American documentary film about Michael Jackson's rehearsals and preparation for the concert series of the same name scheduled to start on July 13th, 2009 at the was it, O2 Arena, but canceled due to his death. Uh, 18 days prior on June 25th, the film includes additional behind-the-scenes footage including dancer auditions and costume design. The film, uh, the film's director, Kenny Ortega, confirmed that none of the footage was originally intended for release. But after Jackson's death, it was agreed that the film would be made. The footage was filmed in California at the Staples Center and the Forum. Wow. The film was given... So, okay, so... so <clears throat> Let's understand what I'm what I'm just saying here. <laughs> wow. Michael Jackson never intended for this is it to come out.
So l- let's put this in perspective. This number one is not a concert video. So when you talk about Taylor Swift eclipsing Michael Jackson based on concert videos, well, this is a documentary. Not only a documentary, but this is a documentary that he himself didn't even want. And and you're talking about like barely eclipsing. He Taylor Swift. His numbers are not that much better. And I believe if you look in certain places, that one is still questionable. So, you know, there's a lot to be said here. And they're going out of their way. And, I mean, again, like I said, there's there's such a person on the screen that you know named Beyonce that somehow, uh, somehow just – Keeps keeps being forgotten or seems to keep being forgotten within the grand scheme of things. Just did this mega tour where the tickets uh were um your life and a child and 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 servitude in your next life to get decent tickets. You know, these things are going on. It's just amazing to me, man. I'm just saying. Um Let's see. Let me real quick. All right. All right. Where am I at? Um, okay. So the film was given a worldwide release uh, and a limited two week theatrical run from October 28th to November 12th, 2009. But the theatrical release was later extended for an additional three weeks in domestic theaters and one to three weeks in overseas markets. Tickets went on sale a month early on September 27th to to satisfy the highly anticipated um, demand. Um, The the film broke numerous pre-sale and box office records. Again, remember, this is a film that He himself didn't want to come out. Since the film's confirmation, AEG Live faced criticism most consistently of claims that they led, uh, that they may have had the film uh, only to make a profit or only had made the film to make profit. Uh, Multiple members of Jackson's family had confirmed that they did not support the film, and some of the family members went as far as to try and stop the film agreement in August. The film also has been surrounded by allegations regarding the appearance of body doubles in place of Jackson, which Sony denied. And it faced outrage from some of Jackson's fans with going as far as to to protest against the film. In 2009, a judge approved a deal between Jackson's estate, concert promoter AG Live, and Sony Pictures. The agreement allowed Sony to edit the hundreds of hours of rehearsal footage needed to create the film. Sony subsequently paid $50 million for the film rights. Now, let's go back to what we were just talking about. Well, sorry, what uh, the GOAT Michael Jackson was talking about. He was talking about Tommy Mottola and Sony. So, see, here's what you got to remember. These people have long-standing memories and even a longer hatred. So, the hatred of Michael Jackson is, like, you you would think, oh, man, he's been gone all this time. You think that was enough? Man, no. No, 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 no. These people... Man, to just let this be a lesson to you how much they hate Michael Jackson. Okay? Just understand that. Um, they they really, really hate Michael Jackson. And with that being said, let's uh keep reading. And uh, you know, as you see with their, you know, you could watch the montage, you see Queen B there, and then you see old Taylor Swift. Man. Nah. Just showing you the contrast of how they do. 
You know, I'm just saying. And then there's 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 the goat. Now, again, um, the film was uh, the film received generally positive views from both critics and Jackson's fans. The portrayal of Jackson and his performances were generally praised. While criticism mainly consisted of both critics and fans who felt um, that it, I'm sorry, something came on the screen. Blah blah blah. Feels the critics of the film uh, was made to profit from Jackson's death, and that Jackson would not have wanted the film released because he was a perfectionist. Despite some fans boycotting the film and his family not endorsing the film, the ticket the ticket sales for for this it, it broke international records a month before its release. It made two hundred and eighty six million, equivalent to three hundred and ninety million in in two thousand twenty two worldwide. And it is listed in the Guinness World Records as the highest grossing documentary film at the global box office. So when you see, um, let me go back. Where's that headline? Where the headline at now? This is willful denial. Well, let's just call it what it is. They lying. You knew good and doggone well that Michael Jackson got a Guinness World Record as the highest grossing documentary film at the global box office. So how did you even throw him in there with her concert video? This was very dishonest. And whoever's responsible for this um, should should definitely be scrutinized uh, with the utmost because Michael Jackson has a Guinness book, uh, a Guinness world record. And that has not been broken on a film that he didn't even want out. So to say Taylor Swift has has done anything to Michael Jackson's record, no. No, she has not. Because he doesn't have a concert video out. This is behind-the-scenes footage of a concert that never happened. To to even use that as an example, like how irresponsible, how what what a reach to just go disrespect um Michael Jackson. But you know, it, it wasn't just Michael Jackson. Because for me, you know, I'm like, well, wait a minute. Let's let's really take a look at what's happening here. You know, you talk about Drake tying him with all of these number ones. Drake definitely should not even be considered for this conversation. Are all the records that he's qualifying for this actually even Drake records? Or are they songs with Drake on them? Because Michael Jackson doesn't have that. There's no, there's none of that when you're talking about tying him at number ones. Those are his tunes. But nonetheless, there was an article from today because I wanted to see all out of all of this hype about Taylor Swift and this and that. And it just seemed to me that they were overhyping Taylor Swift. And I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, but it just seemed to me that they were just they they were doing a bit much, in my opinion when it comes to Taylor Swift and downplaying the impact of Beyonce. Which, as we, uh, you know, this turns out, and again, um, 
this this is an aspect of of anti blackness that we have to look at. It's in entertainment, but this is a element of anti blackness by way of propaganda, and this propaganda arm is extremely strong. So you have to understand how it operates. Nonetheless, not saying get lost in entertainment or get lost behind supporting entertainers. That's not what I'm saying in the least. However, understand what all what what you see means. And so to, to this regard, um, this article was by to uh today, like from the Today Show. And this is uh from October 1st, 2023. And it's by Francesca Gariano. It reads, Tina Knowles is celebrating two of 2023's hottest tickets. Beyonce's Renaissance Tour and Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. Whatever that means. On Instagram, Knowles shared a screenshot of a Facebook post from New- the New York Times, which linked out the article an article to the detailed economic and cultural impact of her daughter Beyonce's tour. In the caption of her post, Knowles wrote, This is so awesome. To be able to stimulate the economy is no small feat at Beyonce. Knowles also gave a sweet nod to Swift in her caption, adding, and Taylor Swift Just being young women and being able to say this is so awesome. Proud of them both. Okay. I guess. I mean, hmm. I put it to you like this how I take that. Some of y'all might be like, oh, she's doing this, she's been doing that. No, that was just, that was, that was class. That's, that's, I'll just put it that way. That was class. That was just Tina Knowles being classy and understanding uh, the game and the business. So, I mean, and, and, and look at how they took it. Oh, she gives a sweet nod to Taylor Swift. I mean, because Beyonce is really kicking her ass out of here. But, I mean, oh, man. (laughs) She has so much love for Taylor Swift. Man, look at at Beyonce's mom. She really loves Taylor Swift, man. Reads on. Beyonce and Swift's tours overlapped in the United States during the summer. Both were a pop culture sensation with social media platforms inundating, inundating, uh, inundated with uh, by various trends coming out of each tour. Well, yeah, see, the Cuffit Challenge came long before the tour even began, so let's just give Beyonce credit for having a whole challenge that never had a video for the song. I don't know if Taylor Swift can say that, but, and again, I'm just, you know, hey, man, we're we're just calling it how it is. If you're a Swifty out there, I don't hate on Swifties because, you know, I'm not a fan. You might be. Um, and that's fine and dandy. I just don't know a Taylor Swift song to save my life. And uh, I look at it as Taylor Swift is maybe falsely being overhyped and lumped in the same category as, as a Beyonce for whatever reason or what another. Uh, reads on. For Swift's Eras tour, or Era, I'm not sure how that's pronounced. We'll just say Eras. Um, f- flagships or friendship bracelets and do it yourself themed costumes became the norm, while Beyonce's Renaissance tour or World Tour birthed the Mute Challenge and 
<laughs> and had uh, concert goers following the request for the silver theme in celebration of Virgo season. With Beyonce's tour wrapping up in, on October, uh, October 1st and Swift's ongoing tour resuming November 9th in Argentina, both tours have already generated millions of dollars along the way. Now, listen to what I just said. Beyonce's tour wrapped up October 1st. Read on to learn more about the tour's economic impact. How much has the Renaissance tour made? Well, it goes on to read. Beyonce's Renaissance tour kicked off May 10th in Sweden and will conclude on October, October 1st, or I guess we shall say did conclude October 1st, Kansas City, uh, in Kansas City, rather, before uh, before the tour kicked off, Forbes estimated that Beyonce would earn nearly two point one billion from her tour. The Cuffit Singers uh, Singers Tour set multiple records over the summer, including back to back records for the highest one month gross in history in both July and August. August according to September uh, to a September report by Billboard. In July, she grows $127.6 million, and, and in August, that number increased to $170.9 million. The outlet also reported that the Renaissance Tour became the highest-grossing tour by a female artist, surpassing Madonna's Sticky and Sweet Tour with $460. $1.3 million. During the Renaissance Tour, Beyonce also gave back $2 million to students and small businesses through her charity foundation, Bay Good, or Be Good. Half, um, half, half of the donations went to entrepreneurs with um, luncheons hosted by Be Good the day before each show for a chance to win a hundred thousand grand or a hundred thousand a hundred thousand dollar grant and other portions of the two million dollar donation was allocated to the Renaissance Scholarship Fund. Beyonce's tour spawned several special moments over the course of the run, including a special tribute to the late Tina Turner. Uh, a birthday surprise from Diana Ross, as well as numerous performances alongside her eldest daughter, Blue Ivy. It was also a hot spot for celebrities, including Leonardo DiCaprio, Vanessa Bryant, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, Kim and Khloe Kardashian, and more. How much has the Eras tour made? Swift's Eras Tour originally ran from March 17th through August 9th throughout the year. Swift added a, additional dates, including several international dates in 2023 and 2024, as well as additional dates in the United States and internationally. While Swift's Tour has uh, still has 13 months to go, so far it has been estimated that she can earn one billion in sales. Now, you, that is a whole billion shorter. That's a whole billion shorter than what you already know Beyonce done made. And she still got 13 months to go. Beyonce's tour started in May. Ended October 1st. This woman has to still do 13 more months of shows to still be a billion shy of Beyonce. And all we're hearing about is Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift. That is the math, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you know, with Polestore, they estimated the singer will exceed $1.4 billion in the new year. But hell, there's a whole other year of shows to do. 
So Beyonce was able to knock out that much more with that much less time on the road. Being that much older. I'm just saying that some of the hype around Taylor Swift might might be a little overdone. And, and maybe it's time to stop overdoing it at such a high rate and a high level as, as it's been done. Because I'm Beyonce's done. Beyonce's she's 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 not going back out. The 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 concert series is over. It started in May. That's not even a whole year. And she's already over two. Billion. This girl got 13 months to go to crack a billion. And you're trying to compare Taylor's. Y'all don't compare Beyonce to Michael Jackson. So why on earth would you be comparing Taylor Swift to Michael Jackson? And not only that, you're talking about how she broke some record of his. He has a Guinness World Record for doc for the for a documentary. So you went out of your way to make something up that wasn't true, and so now I'm really glad that, um, you know the the disclaimer because truth be told, X, platform X, oh they was letting that lie ride for a minute, and and you're talking about major publications put this out. And they was just riding with this lie like this was cool. It's like, no, it's not. And we all see what it is for what it is. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this, again, we, we in boxing, there's a term called paper champions. This is what a paper champion is. One at, at the highest, you're talking about she'll exceed 1.4 billion. So you don't even see her making a billion and a half. And we're talking about Forbes estimation of her tour, of Beyonce's Renaissance tour, which kicked off May 10th. And it concluded October 1st. They already got her slated for $2.1 billion. While Taylor Swift has 13 months to go on her tour to break a billion dollars. For those of you who do not understand the math, I guess what see, and this is why there's this is why they're making a big deal about her concert video. The concert video is gross and it's gross and this and it's gross and that because you don't have anything else. You have to talk about the concert video because you really actually want to get away from the numbers of these sales. Because it if you look at this math right here. 2.1 billion versus 1.4 at best. With two individuals who have records. Do the award is the award count mathing for you, family? Is the award count mathing for you? And for all of you beehivers. I'm just saying, I ain't saying go start trouble with the Swifties. But I'm just saying, is this math mathing for you? And then they going to have her coming after the GOAT, and they won't ever put Beyonce on that level. And Beyonce has never said she was on that level. But I mean, come on, man. We, we've done seen Jack Harlow. You, you got your Justin Bieber's, your Justin Timberlake's. Now is What's her name again? 
Oh, Taylor Swift. Right. See, everybody knows Michael Jackson. Everybody knows a Michael Jackson song, even if you don't even like black people. That's who Michael Jackson is, and there is no person that is that on earth. As much as you just don't like it, as much as the system doesn't like it, the facts still remain. Michael Jackson is the best to do it. As simple as that. I mean, I don't understand it. It's it's just simply this. Right now, as far as female artists, female artists, female artists, Beyonce holds the record for highest grossing tour by a female artist, even surpassing Madonna. And you're talking about Madonna had 4,601. I'm sorry. 461 million. Um, that's, that's incredible. Beyonce blew the doors off of Madonna. And they're talking about Taylor Swift is eclipsing Michael Jackson by a concert video that is literally in the Guinness World Books of Records for being a documentary. This is, and this is their journalism? Uh-uh. That's dirty journalism right there. That's dishonest as all get out. And for those of you who is telling that lie that Taylor Swift has somehow um, uh, eclipsed Michael Jackson because she she does not have a documentary. She has a concert, but he doesn't. That's so this is it is not that. So for all of y'all out here telling that lie. Own your stuff, little girl. Own it. Because that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, y'all just going to sit up here and just act like this man's accomplishments are not this man's accomplishments. He's, he's definitely done what he needed to do. And so for this to even like, for this to even be a thing, this is just whack. This is whack in all sense of the word. Taylor Swift's Eras Tour film sets record for concert film debut. Michael Jackson's she's you're a, you're comparing her to to Michael Jackson, to whom has a Guinness World Record for documentary by the way this was footage that if he was alive he would have never let be seen the family protested it some diehard fans protested it and it still got a Guinness World Record. Michael Jackson is not to be trifled with, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let these people fool you into thinking that our icons, there's nothing coming close to. I mean, and if and if anybody, everybody who keeps doing that. You should just identify them as a liar. Not to mention that woman to the left.
That woman right there holds the records for highest grossing tour for a female artiste. Female, not just American. She has a global record. Because again, what does she say? The the tour kicked off May 10th in Sweden. So this ticket didn't even the, the, the concert didn't even start in America. It didn't even start in this continent. So this foundational black American sister Beyonce. Is the reigning champ when it comes to women. And as far as. The great Michael Jackson. He is forever the goat. Babylon has fallen. Babylon has fallen. Let it fall. And let us rise. Can you dig it? Yeah, and so, you know, there's probably going to be people out there that, and again, this any Swifty that, that doesn't understand why I'm saying this doesn't make sense. Because at the end of the day, Beyonce hasn't came anywhere near the Eclipse of Michael Jackson numbers in, in relative terms. But she still holds the record for all, all, Yes, indeed, all female artists in tours, meaning that many people around the world want to come out and see Beyonce. Here's the thing about Beyonce. I could remember her songs from the 90s. Wonder if we'll be saying that about Taylor Swift in the next 10 years. Only time will tell. And as we see, Beyonce is still here. So there's that. There's been plenty to come and go. And plenty that had to go to the back burner. So this is how the the cookie crumbles. Because when you're talking about star power, America can and the machine can fund a star only so far, and you'll be breaking in America. But to do what Michael Jackson and Beyonce have done is break international records as foundational black Americans. And just like the piece that I played earlier where Michael Jackson told you, we are the creators here, us. And they have an agenda. All these other agendas, you you have seen it back then. Now you're seeing it now with trying to rework the history of hip-hop. It's all by design, just like Michael Jackson told you. It's not by accident. It's absolutely by design. They're doing it on purpose. And so we always have to be mindful that this is the objective of our enemy. Now, every now and then, you may get some that, that will come around and, but man, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I like me some Taylor Swift. You can like Taylor Swift, but she's no Beyonce. And if Beyonce is no Michael Jackson, then what is Taylor Swift? Because she's miles behind Beyonce. So why would you even bring Michael Jackson up? That was a fake attempt to legitimize this woman. Now, I'm sorry. As much as you have her going around and going to football games and getting with football players and all of this, this woman is the same woman who said years ago after Kanye West ran up on stage that She had anxiety around black men. She was afraid of black men. So when it comes down to Taylor, hey, well, man, I think you're being a little harsh. Oh, baby. 
And, you know, it, it, for all of uh, the Swifties who would be like, well, hey, man, you know, uh, you should give her a chance. This is all I have to say to that. You shouldn't have been talking shit. So this is what you not finna see us do for no, uh, <laughs> for no, uh, no Taylor Swift. We will not be jumping in the phone booth for that woman because that just simply ain't going to uh, be what's happening. And, you know, if, if people come around, hey, man, well, why, uh, you know, I mean, I understand Beyonce, man, but, man, Taylor Swift, just like Beyonce, you know, I mean, she, she up there, man, don't you think? I mean, brother, come on now, because I'm sure some of y'all might be in my comments doing that, like, Hey, hey, brother, come on now. You know, Taylor Swift, she up there with Beyonce now. And all I got to say to y'all I don't is, remember asking you a goddamn thing. Because if you are silly enough to think that, then all I'm saying... Shade tree, nigga. <laughs> and also... Where's your family from? Oh, where's your family from? And I mean, you know, at the end of the day, uh, some of y'all just going to stay asleep because this is you. Cut, dancing, shuffling, scratching, boot-licking, bamboozing, Uncle Tom Negro. Because everybody ain't going to make it. And I'm telling you as a psychologist, I'm not going to be able to psychologize all them on the corner. Some of them going to sleep for God. And I'm now, with that being said, though, I do have to say Al Sharpton was on point for the old school uh, take back in the day. And then, I, like I said, he probably saw some things that might might have scared him and freaked him out. And and a lot of them old Negroes, that's what they do now. They they have changed their tune. It's, and if you listen to what they say now, there is no fight in them whatsoever. So for all of that old Negro squad that used to be having, let's fight racism and oppression in their mouth, let's go up here and let's boycott that, let's boycott that, they ain't saying nothing because they enjoying their sponsorships right now. Because they are... Sambo, Sambo, Sambo! And so while you see one of the objectives of this whole thing is to get their hands on our culture for multiple reasons. And, and when you see them moseying in the Drake's moseying, I mean, because, you know, here's another thing. This guy, oh, man, he tied, he tied Michael Jackson. He tied Michael Jackson for... For number ones, he got all these billboard number ones. Man, let me tell you something. Drake going to have to stay in the people's eye because he can't go 10 years without doing a project and be relevant. That ain't going to happen. That is not going to happen. He don't have it in him. That, that's not his forte, man. Can't tell me, oh, man, please. Nah, it ain't, it, it's not going to be like that. And here's the difference in musicians. Uh, and, you know, artists that are not necessarily 100% responsible for their sounds, like Michael Jackson was. So, and the Prince and all the people we grew up with and all these greats that we grew up knowing, that these people act like our greats were inspired by, but, you know, someone else from the Caribbean, I guess, or Puerto Rico, which makes no damn sense. And, and it, it's all about sifting and grafting into our culture, but that's what we call tethers. And some have been very clear about how they want to be part of every justice claim that we have down to the point to where they are. And it's, it's really third handed third world backstabbish culture. Let me graft myself into you 
so then I can overtake you. That's just a third world backstabber. All skin folk ain't kin folk and hashtag hands off our reparations. You have no rights here. We're not under the empire. So you might have bought into the, the pipe dream and the sauce have drank from the Kool-Aid and believe that there's one in the middle, there's one on the left, and the one all the way over here to the right, for some reason, y'all believe they are in some kind of mutual company music-wise and musically and culturally and internationally. Well, I say never. And I'm sure that some of you will come into my comment thread and say, hey, man, why are you hating on Taylor Swift? I mean, hey, brother, don't, don't you, you, all know you don't like no Taylor Swift? Man, I like Taylor Swift. I'm Swifty too, brother. Well, to you and all of the ones alike who are hate watching this and feeling some kind of way and say, hey, why is he hating on Taylor Swift? Why is he hating on Drake? Because there ain't no Michael Jackson. And they never will be. They're not a Beyonce and never will be. If you don't think so, and you think that this woman on the, on the right has a shot at being as iconic and impactful as this brother here in the middle, well, I got to say, I'm definitely speaking for myself, Beatzilla PDX official, the Beatzilla PDX official show, those of you in the chat, and the new black media, the black grassroots, the voices of new black media, all of you, I would say it'd be safe to say I'm speaking for all of y'all. If you believe that there is someone else that can even come close to forever the GOAT, Michael Jackson, we dedicate this song to you. All right, family, family, thank y'all once again for tuning in to the Beatzilla PDX official show. And this is the news break. This is absolutely the midweek report edition. And so with that being said, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Beatzilla PDX. You can email me at ourrealtruth at gmail.com. And if you feel so inclined to support this broadcast, you could Make sure you give this channel a fat thumbs up and a share on your social media. And if you would like to do it financially, you could definitely do so by way of Cash App, uh, dollar sign Beatzilla PDX. That's Cash App, dollar sign Beatzilla PDX. And we have PayPal, which is Zilla Muzak. That is Z I L L A M U Z A K at PayPal. And uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed this broadcast because we had to give uh, some, some reverence to one of our greats to whom they can never get it. They just can't uh, get over not disrespecting him, you know, but it also makes sense. But, but even at the uh, end of the day, he still gets to laugh, laugh, last laugh because so many years he's been gone, and they are still, still, still mad. <laughs> so salute to Michael Jackson. Shout out and uh, congratulations and salute to Beyonce. And with that being said, stay black, stay vigilant, stay alive. Black first, black first, black first.
Shalom, y'all. When you know who Satan is, yes, sir. you don't have to kill him, no. The stone of truth. Yes. See, that's what you throw. Yes, sir. Right, right. Allah says, had we wished to take a pastime from before, surely we would have done it. Nay, we cast truth at falsehood till we knock out its brains. Every one of you that knows the truth, stand up and tell it from the mountaintop. Black people can't take it no more. So wherever you are on the job, in the factory, I don't care where you are. If you know the truth, stand up on the truth and tell Satan, who the hell are you to try and pick my friends? Farrakhan is God's man. And you are from the enemy of God. So to hell with you. Stand up on it like a man. Yes, sir.